coming up with X problems and X solutions can be difficult. Otherwise, they likely would have already been solved. And many of the problems and solutions students develop into projects will have been solved to varying degrees. But that does not diminish them as learning activities. As always in PBL, it is the process, the attempt, rather than the solution that is important. Now that shouldn't be an excuse for not letting students try and change the world. There are many examples of students doing so. From becoming CEOs, starting their own companies, making scientific and technological breakthroughs, or starting social movements. But while there are many resources that encourage students to be better global citizens, changing the world by being help nice and helpful, in digital technologies, we are exploring ways to make X solutions to X problems. Now, some competitions such as the Microsoft Imagine Cup and Google Science Fair provide good examples of the potential of students to make a difference in the world. But again, it is the attempt as much as the solution that makes a difference in the student. Now, to build capacity for students to develop X problems to X solutions, or X solutions to X problems, there are approaches we can use to be creative, to develop original ideas, if only for themselves. Now, these techniques include linking through word association, black boxing, looking at the inputs and outputs, parallels, looking at past similar solutions, variations, where we just change one aspect of the problem, or additive examples, where we combine various solutions to try to come up with new solutions from that combination. And this can be supported with visualization tools from post-it notes or hexagons to charting tools such as mind maps, concept maps, SWOT analysis, brainstorming and brain writing, thinking hats, trees, and many others. I think one of the, the things that really separates us from the high primates is that uh, we're tool builders. And I read a, uh, a study that measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species on the planet. The condor used the least energy to move a kilometer. And uh, humans came in uh, with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. It was not, not uh, too proud of a showing for the crown of creation. So uh, that didn't look so good. But then somebody at Scientific American had the insight to test the efficiency of locomotion for a man on a bicycle. And a man on a bicycle, or a human on a bicycle, blew the condor away, completely off the top of the charts. And that's what a computer is to me. Uh, what a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. And it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. Creativity is a process. And techniques and tools can assist, but generally students will need to go through a number of stages. Firstly, preparation, preparing their mind to explore the problem and its dimensions. An incubation process where the problem is internalized into the unconscious mind. And then slowly getting a gut feeling or intimation that an idea is coming. To illumination, where they have an insight, an aha moment. But then also a verification stage where they're going, well, is that a good idea? Does it meet the solution? Now, this can take some time. And you should plan it into your uh, programs to allow students to have that developmental time to be creative. We can't expect them to do so instantaneously. Now we can do many things to encourage creativity, but we can also inhibit it, primarily through fear of failure. But failure lies at the very heart of the creative process. Students must be resilient enough to let go of ideas, accept criticism, and start again when necessary. They should be prepared to fail, and fail a lot, and understand that this is not a negative, but part of the creative process. And to be constantly trying to spot failure, to fail early, and to be ready to recover from failure at various stages in their projects. So many things go wrong when you're starting a company, and often I think people ask, you know, what mistakes uh, should you avoid making? And, you know, my answer to that question is don't even bother trying to avoid mistakes because you're going to make tons of mistakes, right? And the, the, um, the important thing is actually learning quickly from whatever mistakes you make. Right? And, I mean, there, there are things every single year of Facebook's existence that could have killed us or made it so that it just seemed like moving forward and making a lot of progress just seemed intractable, but you just kind of bounce back and you learn and um, nothing is impossible. You just have to kind of keep running through the wall. But at the other extreme, perfectionism can result in stagnation, where students do not progress because they keep looking for the perfect outcome at each stage of the project. This is particularly important in IPBL, 
where there is often no perfect solution. And any solution that students develop, no matter how good, will always have areas for improvement. But this is an important aspect of real-world problems, but an area where many of our students, particularly those who are most successful in traditional schooling, where they are used to finding the one correct solution required by their teachers, find extremely confronting. 